Recent changes to the election laws are going to allow for the first time some of the election results to be broadcast in BC before the polls close. I'm here with uh, Mario Canseco, Vice President of Insights West. Mario, how might this impact strategic voting? Well, it's a very small window. You only have about an hour uh, in BC to vote after the uh, votes start to be counted in Quebec and in Ontario. We may have a larger number of votes and a larger number of seats decided in Atlantic Canada, uh, which usually goes liberal. So that might be a bit misleading. If you're looking at the numbers and you see the liberals doing particularly well in Nova Scotia or in Newfoundland, it might not be enough to, uh, to suggest that there's going to be a specific color for the government. Now, we've known about this a long time. You know, four, four years ago, there was somebody who was tweeting results, not saying the names of the parties, but essentially saying uh, four blueberries and two oranges and three cherries, and that was the way that you were telling people uh, out west what was right. going on. So it's new in the sense that it's legal, uh, but, you know, there's always a way to find those, those numbers if you want to. Do you think uh, there's going to be some hardcore people who uh, hang on for the last little last minute to see what the results are before they go cast their ballot? Uh, I, I think it might happen in the in the urban writings more than anything. Uh, four years ago, one of the last uh, a, a polling stations that closed was located in the Vancouver Center riding. A lot of people decided to vote at the final moments, and they actually closed that one at around 7.15 or 7.20, because you essentially, if you're lined up outside at 6.59, you can still vote. If you show up afterwards, then you can't vote. And this is uh, quite complex because you, you might feel that you're going to have the upper hand on all the other electors because you have a little bit of, a, of knowledge of what is going on in, in the East, but it, it may not be enough time. And, and if you're waiting for that to happen, you might get a warped view. Let's say for the sake of argument, we know that Quebec is going slightly orange and we know that, the, uh, that Nova Scotia is going slightly red. It's not enough because you still need to count most of the other seats. Uh, we're still seeing, uh, from what your, uh, the polling results we're seeing, uh, a really tight race. Um, talk about some of the trends we're seeing heading into the final month. Well, BC is uh, quite interesting because a month ago we were having all of these discussions about Thomas Mulcair as the next prime minister. They were riding high at the national level and now they're down in BC. They're still in first place and they haven't finished in first place in this century. So this would be monumental for them if it continues. But the federal conservatives are doing a lot better. They're up seven points, getting some of that vote back in the island and also in the Okanagan to a lesser extent in Metro Vancouver, mostly in Surrey where they're really targeting some of the candidates and you know it could be very very close particularly with the liberals doing well in the urban areas I mean I don't think they're really expecting to win anything in the island um, but they're doing well in specific writings in the North Shore they're doing fantastically well with some of the candidates that they have so it's going to be a, a three-horse race maybe not as close as what we see nationally but certainly to a it, to a much better level than what we saw four years ago um, what are you seeing just in terms lastly on what race are you really paying attention to and why um, I think there's really three key uh, races that we need to look into. One of them is Victoria. Uh, Maury Rankin, uh, very respected in the environmental movement. The Greens, uh, ironically enough, are targeting that seat with Joanne Roberts from the CBC, so that one's going to be fun to watch and very close uh, from what we can tell. Vancouver Granville is a fascinating riding. Uh, you have really three bands that are very different. There's one that used to be part of Libby Davis's riding that is heavily NDP. Uh, then there's the one to the south, which is heavily Indo-Canadian, tends to vote liberal. And then in the middle, you have all of these large, big houses, <laughs> which usually vote conservative. So it's really about knocking on doors and, and really figuring out what is going to happen there. And the other one that is interesting for me is West Vancouver. Uh, the Liberals are running uh, Pamela Goldsmith-Jones, former mayor, very well known. They can take that seat from the Conservatives, which really would have been unthinkable four years ago.